crime historians and welcome back to another episode of a crime story podcast. I'm your host, Kaylin Lois, and I'm originally from the United States, but I moved to France almost two years ago. And when I moved here, I started hearing these crazy crime stories and I created a crime story podcast to tell you all about these international stories. So without further ado, let's just jump into the 10th episode of A Crime Story. But first, here's a commercial from a podcast that I think you may enjoy. Come on, move already. Ugh, so slow. I am going to be late again. Does this sound like your typical commute? The boss is going to kill me. Sure, just cut me off, you... Ah, ah, ah. Let's be family friendly here. Wait, who said that? That's not really important. Would you like your commute a lot less disastrous? Yeah, I could use that. Well then, let me adjust your dial. (laughs) Introducing the Road Tripping Podcast. Just sit back and relax while our hosts Dean and Molly entertain you with trivia, history, true crime, the paranormal, and much, much more. All in the hopes that your commute will suck just a little less. Now, today's story takes place in France in 1933, and as always, let's begin with the legal system in France. Now, this crime story takes place in 1933, so it was during the Third French Republic. And just for context, France is currently in the Fifth Republic. The French Third Republic lasted from 1870 to 1940 when World War II broke out. French constitutional law of 1875 defined the composition of the Third French Republic. The law of France is under the civil law system with two main categories of law being public and private law, which differs from the common law system that we're used to in the United States, which has civil and criminal law. 1933 in France wasn't really a bad time. Now, France was insulated during the Great Depression due to the fact that their economy was focused on agriculture. France's social, political, and economic year was far superior than the rest of Europe during this time. The only real difference of France's legal system in the Third Republic in contrast to today is that the courts were independent. Therefore, the government really had no say in how a court was run or even what happened after a verdict was read. I first heard about this case when I was watching one of my favorite shows, of course on the Investigation Discovery Channel, called Deadly Women on the episode Double Trouble. And I know it is so dramatic and this show has dramatic reenactions and it's just good quality. But ever since I watched that episode, this case has never really left my mind because it is that nut. This case takes place in La Mans, France in February 1933. Le Mans is southwest of Paris and is located in the Pays de Loire region of France. And today the city inhabits just under 150,000 people. And the city is known for the 24 hours of Le Mans, which is is a car race. It was considered to be a small town in the 1930s. Christine and Léa Papin were sisters. Christine was born in 1905 and Léo was born in 1911. They really didn't have a great childhood. Their father was an abusive alcoholic who had actually raped their older sister, Amelia, and their mother, Clemence, is from what I can best describe, was a narcissist. Clemence sent Amelia and Christine off to go live in a convent that was really known for their harsh discipline, and Leia was sent to live off with an extended family member, which gave their mother Clemence like duty free of motherhood, which is how she preferred it to be. Amelia and Christine flourished in the structured environment of the convent, and Amelia even decided to take vows to become a nun. This angered Clemence because she wanted to send her daughters off to work in order to make money for her. Therefore, Clemence removed Christine from the nunnery in order to make money for her. 
and Christine started to work as a maid. She had learned maid skills at the convent and was known to be exceptionally good at her job. But her mother was not liking the wages that Christine gave her and forced her to resign from some positions for better paying ones. During this time, Leah was also pushed by her mother to become a maid just like her sister. Though Leah and Christine were not living together at this time, they had become awfully close and hung out with each other a lot during their free time. In 1926, Christine was offered a new position for a retired lawyer named Monsieur Lachant and his wife Lonnie and their daughter who still lived at the home Genevieve. After a few months of this position, Christine convinced the family to also employ Leah. Finally, the two sisters were living together and their bond was closer than ever. The two sisters hardly left their home, not to even go dancing or to seek gentleman callers. They only left home to attend church or to visit a fortune teller in the town. Apparently, this fortune teller told them that they were man and wife in a previous life. And I don't know about y'all, but that sounds a little creepy to me. The sisters shared a room in the attic, and which had a balcony, and they worked very hard at their job, which made their employers pleased. But people in town noticed the girls to be a bit odd. They were cold in distance, and a previous employer of Christine's fired her only after 15 days because she was mad to do some duties that she felt was beneath her. The Lachon family had no such problems with Christine or Leia. Christine and Leia considered Madame Lachon to be a mother figure to them. And when Madame Lachon discovered that the girls were sending all their earnings back to their mother, she was pissed and demanded them to stop. They needed to keep money for themselves. She looked after the girls kind of like they were her own. But after a few years, there was a shift in this dynamic. Madame Lachon was very critical of Christine and Leia's work. And she would even pinch Leia like really hard and forced her to kneel on the floor until every crumb was up off of it. And she would check their duties with a white glove. And if she found a little bit of dust, apparently from the sources I read, she would go off. Christine was reported to be fiercely jealous of Guinevere, who on occasion would attempt to have conversation with Leia, which would just make Christine really mad. Leia confided in Christine, and they became closer and closer, almost too close. Christine was definitely the more dominant of the two, and it was said that Leia could hardly think for herself. The two sisters were very much like they looked alike, they had the same hairstyle, the same body type, and they were seen like as one, as a unit. Christine considered Leia to be her one and only confidant, her beloved soulmate, and most of all, her property. Sexual relations between Christine and Leia were suspected by the Lachan family because they were just so close. And they spent a um, crazy amount of time in the attic. And I do want to know in that Deadly Women episode I watched, it was said that they did have sexual relations. But when I started researching this case more, I really couldn't find that they did, only that it was suspected. So you take with that as you will. <laughs> On February 2nd, 1933, Madame Lachat and her daughter were turned home to a darkened home. The sisters claimed it was because they had shorted the power with an iron. And according to Christine, Madame Lachat was mad when she heard this. And she went into a rage. It's speculated that maybe even just to like dig at them, she mentioned their incestuous ways. Christine then picked up a jug and smashed Madame Lachon's head on it. 
As the daughter Genevieve went to go check on her mother, Leia joined in on the abuse. Christine shouted that she was going to massacre them and told Leia to smash their heads into the ground. Leia and Christine proceeded to take the eyes out of the Lashon women, who were still alive and presumably begging for their lives. And I'm sorry, but I can't. There's not many grosser things I can think about than taking out someone's eyes. It's just ooh, so gross. After they killed them, they prepared their bodies to cook following a rabbit stew recipe. Then they lifted the skirts of the woman and mutilated their genitals and thighs in a really nasty detail. And this is really gross, so maybe skip ahead like five seconds if you don't want to hear it. Christine and Leia used the menstruation blood of Genevieve and smeared it all over the two women. The women then got ready for bed as if nothing happened. It was just a normal night for them. I don't know about you, but this sounds like an awful, awful, awful way to die. And it was a very brutal crime scene. When the father returned home, he found his entire house to be locked, so he tried to get in through windows and other doors, but nothing worked, so he alerted the police. The police in Monsieur Lachon noticed that the only light on in the house was coming from the maid's quarters. When the police in Monsieur Lachon walked around the house, they noticed that nothing seemed to be amiss. Then they came across the awful crime scene. I mean, can you even imagine seeing your wife and your daughter like that? One of the policemen proceeded to then go up to the maid's quarters, presumably to find the maids in an equally awful state. But he heard voices from the hallway, and when he entered the room, Leia and Christine were on the same bed, nude, hugging each other. On the nightstand was a hammer that had blood and brain matter on them. The sisters, they, like, didn't even attempt to cover up the crime. The sisters confessed to the murder, like, right on the spot. I mean, how could they not? And were arrested. In a crazy turn of events, there was a lot of sympathy for the sisters from the public who believed the crime to be a sign of class struggle. The lawyer pleaded insanity, the only defense that they had, in my opinion. And the sisters played the part by making no eye contact with anyone in the courtroom and seemingly to be in a daze. The sisters never turned on each other and both confessed to sole responsibility of the crime. The lawyer stated that they had an awful childhood and history in the family of mental illness and that their mother was partly to blame. However, when doctors and psychologists examined the sisters, they determined them to be perfectly sane. The police investigators worked tirelessly to find a purpose for these sadistic killings, but they could find no evidence that the crime had been premeditated. It was what you call a quote-unquote crime of passion. In just 40 minutes, the jury handed down the verdict. Guilty, but there was some leniency for Leia, who was given 10 years of hard labor while Christine, believed to be the mastermind of the crime, was sentenced to death by guillotine. And I mean, the French love their guillotines, am I right? During the sisters' time in prison, they were separated, and Christine was just really on the decline. She begged to see Leia and had violent fits and attempted to tear out her own eyeballs, which she they really liked to do that, eh? <laughs> Finally, the judge allowed them to see each other, and Christine made sexual advances on her sister, and this is thoroughly recorded. On January 26, 1934, the French president at the time, Albert, Albert Dubon, in, issued a state of execution for Christine and sentenced her to life of hard labor. She begged the president to be housed with Leia, which was obviously denied. Christine's health declined, and she refused to eat and died at the age of 32 on May 18, 1937. Leia was released 
uh, eight years after the trial on good behavior, and she moved to Nantes with her mother and worked as a hotel maid. In 1966, Leia was interviewed by a French journalist. She was described as a ghost of the past that has burned her until she was the color of ash. Leia admitted she saw vivid apparitions of Christine visiting her in her room. Leia was convinced that the spirit of Christine was living in paradise. She also kept a number of photos of Christine in a trunk containing all of the dresses and memorabilia Christine and her had, had collected over the years they had spent in the Lachon home. In a documentary made in 2000 called, uh, translated from French, of course, Search of the Papin Sister, the filmmaker believed to have found Leia living in a hospice center in France. The woman had a stroke which had left her paralyzed and unable to speak. This woman, who he found for the documentary, died in 2001, while other reports claimed that Leia had died in 1982. That completes the 10th episode of A Crime Story. I would love to hear your thoughts on this case. Do you think this murder was premeditated or do you think it was a crime of passion situation? Do you think Leia and Christine committed incest? And what was Christine's obsession with gouging out eyeballs? You can comment on a crime story Instagram at a crime story pod where I will be posting images from today's story or you can comment on a crime story podcast on Facebook or a crime story pod on Twitter. My website is a crime story podcast.com where you can listen to the podcast as well as read a transcript of today's story underneath the blog tab. Or you can even comment or see additional photos of a crime story podcast on YouTube. I've also started a TikTok under the name A Crime Story Podcast, if my American listeners can still get on TikTok. And so make sure to go check it out if you can. Thank you so much for listening. And if you could please leave a review at the podcast on Spotify and Apple podcast, it helps others find the show. And if you could tell a friend about a crime story, I would be forever grateful. I hope to see you next time where I will be covering a case from Egypt. You won't want to miss it. A crime story podcast is hosted, created, and written by me, Kaylin Lois. Sources for today's episode can be found on my website, a crimestorypodcast.com. Theme music is by Ross Budgen, and additional story editing is brought to you by my father, Mike. Thank you so much for listening to Crime Story. I will see you next week, and remember to stay safe at home and abroad. <music>